In 1947, Cyclone Taylor was among the elite. In 1958, the construction was still tied up in financial matters. The Hockey Hall of Fame in Kingston still had not begun and NHL President Clarence Campbell became impatient and pulled the NHL support away from Kingston and into Toronto. Toronto was a natural location for the Hockey Hall of Fame with the team's former manager Con Smythe leading the way. The Hockey Hall of Fame was officially opened on August 26, 1961. By the 1980s, the Hockey Hall of Fame operating cost over $300,000 a year, with maintenance costs only escalating. The NHL had to find a new location in Toronto. On June 18, 1993, the Hockey Hall of Fame officially opened at its new home at BCE Place at a renovation cost of $27 million. Its first year of operation at the new location, more than 500,000 guests visited the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame consists of many aspects of the game. It ranges from the old greats like Gordie Howe, who despite subpar offensive seasonal numbers in comparison to others, have become almost folklore with grown men speaking as if he was Paul Bunyan. One man who has both the size and numbers to back up his legendary status is Mario Lemieux, who stuck it out in Pittsburgh despite some tough seasons. One cannot help think of Canley's Cup Series with Paul Henderson's game-winning goal while recalling the 70s. One man who played a part in that is Ken Dryden. Dryden is now known more for his political ambition than his marvelous and dominant seasons as the goalie of the Montreal Canadiens dynasty. Dryden's mask would rise up and others would inspire to become an eagle or a shark. The Canadians are hockey's most successful team with the most championships and have arguably the most passionate fans. Their locker room is on display in sealing up the last franchise to be home in a French-speaking city. On January 26, 1961 in Brantford, Ontario, is where the world first set eyes on Wayne Gretzky. By the age of two, he was skating, and by the age of five, he was a local icon. Gretzky turned professional at the age of 17 with the Indianapolis Racers of the World Hockey Association. Eight games later, Gretzky was traded to the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers of the 80s were arguably the greatest team in NHL history. Within two years, they had five future Hall of Fame players. By 1983 and 84 season, the team averaged an NHL record 5.58 goals per game, with a total of 446 goals as a team. That season saw their team have three 50-goal scores and four 100-point scores. After the 1987-88 season, Gretzky was traded to the Los Angeles Kings. Immediately, Gretzky impacted both the Kings and hockey on the west coast of the United States. The first season as a King saw Gretzky beat the Oilers in the playoffs, and by 1993, he had led the Kings to the Stanley Cup Finals. Along with his four Stanley Cup rings, he won with the Oilers. Gretzky won individual awards including the Hart Trophy as the NHL's most valuable player nine times. Yacht Ross for leading the league in scoring seven times. By the time he retired, he held over 60 NHL records. Since November 1st, 1924, the Boston Bruins have become the highlight of hockey in New England. In their biggest heyday, they were unstoppable with players like Schmidt, Orr, Esposito, Bork, and Neely, becoming legendary as they led Boston to numerous division conference crowns, including five Stanley Cups. The 1930s saw the Bees rack up five first place finishes with many individual honors. During the 1938-39 season, Mill Schmidt, a young man from Kitchener, Ontario, joined the team and would play a very significant role in Bruins history. Schmidt, who would later go on to be the only person ever to serve Boston as player, captain and coach. As a player, he and the Bees won their third cup. 
Milt Schmidt retired in late December 1954 and became coach. At the crest of the 70s into the 80s, the Bruins saw the birth of one of the greatest defensemen in history. Once Ray Bork first stepped onto the ice at the Boston Garden after being drafted eighth overall, every person knew he would make the Hockey Hall of Fame. The Montreal native became a five-time Norris Trophy winner as best defenseman after starting his career with the Calder Memorial Trophy as Rookie of the Year in 1980. He is the only rookie defenseman to win both Calder and First Team All-Star honors. Bork played for the Bruins in Colorado Avalanche and retired as the NHL's all-time leading scorer among defensemen with 410 goals, 1,169 assists, second only to Wayne Gretzky, and 1,579 points, just behind former Bruin Phil Esposito. He had three Stanley Cup Finals, but none more special than his win in 2001. He retired shortly after winning his only championship. Before Bork, there was one particular player for Boston that changed the game of hockey. On March 20, 1948, nurses at St. Joseph's General Hospital in Perry Sound, Ontario, wondered if the baby born to Doug and Arva would survive the night. Yet, in spite of a difficult birth, the couple's third child not only lived, but also became one of the greatest hockey players ever. The Hockey News compiled a list of the greatest NHL players of all time, and number two was Doug and Arva's child, Bobby Orr. The professional career of Orr began during the summer of 1966 when he signed a two-year deal with the Boston Bruins. Bobby went on to win the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year and was a second-team All-Star. The following summer in 1967, the Bruins acquired Phil Esposito, Ken Hodge, and Fred Stanfield from Chicago and newcomer Derek Sanderson. Boston's play shifted exponentially. Less than a year later, the Bruins were in the playoffs for the first time in nine years. That season, Orr won the Norris Trophy as best defenseman, but the Bees missed out on the NHL's biggest reward, the Stanley Cup. The same experts at the Hockey News selected the most important regular season performance in NHL history. Orr's extraordinary 1969-70 season was the first. That season, Orr became the first defenseman to lead the NHL in scoring, outscoring the runner-up by 21 points. He not only collected the Art Ross Trophy for most points, but won the Hart Memorial Trophy as the NHL's most valuable player, and for the third consecutive season, a Norris Trophy. The Bruins went on to win the Stanley Cup, their first in 29 years, with Orr winning the Conn Smythe Trophy as the league's most valuable player in the playoffs. I never thought there would be such a day, said Orr. This is what every kid dreams of, scoring the winning goal in the Stanley Cup overtime final. I can't find the words that express what I feel. Orr changed the way the game was played. He expanded the job description of all defensemen who followed. No longer was it accepted for defensemen to join the offensive. It was expected of all of them if teams were to be successful, wrote the Hockey News. The 1970-71 regular season indicated the Bruins would repeat as Stanley Cup champions. Their 57 wins were league best and 121 points. The top four scoring leaders were all Bruins. Orr won his second straight Hart Trophy and fourth consecutive Norris Trophy, but in the first playoff round, the Bruins were stunned by rookie goalie Ken Dryden and the Montreal Canadiens, who went on and beat Boston in seven games and shocked the league. The Bruins avenged their loss in the 1971-72 season. Playing on a severely damaged knee, Bobby Orr dominated the series. That knee would continue to cripple Bobby. It marked the end of an era and spelled the end of a career as a Boston Bruin, trying to return in January of 1977 with the Chicago Blackhawks. Bobby only played eight more games. On November 8, 1978, one month into the NHL season, Bobby Orr's professional career ended at the young age of 30.